Hey, small business people and lovers of good stories in general. Welcome to episode 22 of Small Business War Stories. Today, I had the opportunity to stop in Springfield, Missouri during the Soul of America tour, and I sat down with Jeff Schrog, and Jeff is the founder of Mother's Brewing Company. And Mother's is not just any brewing company. They have a, some really cool things going on where they've uh, really strived to be a part of the community uh, in terms of uh, you know training and employing people, but also in terms of hosting uh, different events, whether it be at uh, movie uh, screenings or music festivals in their beautiful um, lawn and facility there in downtown Springfield. Um, and they've also strived to be involved in terms of donating lots of beer to uh, people in the, uh, in the Springfield community. And uh, Jeff uh, struck me as a really um, authentic guy that really cares about his people. And they, it really felt like his people cared about him. So, um, it, yeah, it was really, I, I learned a lot from him. We talked a little bit about what it meant to uh, recognize, you know, your own mistakes. And I shared some of my experiences. But I let him tell that story. Um, this episode is part of the Soul of America tour. And it's brought to you by Badger Mapping. Badger Mapping is a field sales app that allows you to map your sales route. I used it to map the Soul of America tour, and it works really well. If you tell them that you found them through Small Business War Stories, they will give you two months uh, free. And it's also brought to you by Tecovas Boots. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S. They sell amazing cowboy western boots. I wore them every day during the Soul of America tour. Got lots of compliments, and they you can save a lot of money because they sell directly to you instead of through a retailer. You can find them at tecovasboots.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S, boots.com, and they are awesome. I have their ropers and bourbon. And they are, uh, their episode is also brought to you by Impact Crates. Impact Crates are safety dog crates. They're made in the USA. They're strong, safe, and secure. And they're collapsible crates. They're really easy to move, uh, but they're very safe to transport your pup. If you go there to Impact Crates and use code MUDDY20, M-U-D-D-Y 20, you get 20% off your crate. That Muddy is Muddy Waggers, the name of my pup, who was my companion during my odyssey across America. And like every episode of Small Business War Stories, this one is also brought to you by Proven. Proven is a company that I started with my business partner, Sean. We are a leading small business hiring tool. Thousands of uh, nation uh, businesses nationwide sorry, use us um, every day to hire. And we cannot wait to work with you. If you're a small business that needs to hire, you can go and post your job uh, to us. We have arrangements and we'll post it very uh, widely you'll get a lot of reach and you can also choose premium options and then you can review your candidates uh, on your phone or on your computer and uh, there is a free trial so we can't wait to have you uh, as a customer without further ado i want to move to the episode with jeff schrog of mother's brewing company in springfield missouri Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. And we are live here in beautiful Springfield, Missouri, and I have the pleasure of sitting down with Jeff Schrag today of Mother's Brewing Company. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's, it's great to be here. You have a beautiful facility here, and I'm about to ask you a little bit later what's going on with this big patio here. I'm sure that it turns into a, a, a pretty good uh, party scene during the, during the summer. You are correct. <laughs> that is great. That is great. So, um, Tell me a little bit about, this is my first time to Springfield, and we'll talk about Springfield a little bit at the, before the end of the show, but tell me a little bit more about Mothers. How did this get started? How did you, uh, how did you come about um, this idea? So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have lots of other businesses or have had over the years. Okay. And I kind of got to that point in my life where I had one more business in me. Got it. And I did a bunch of soul searching, and I thought, you know, maybe I could brew as good a beer as anybody anywhere right here in downtown Springfield. Wow. And that was kind of the genesis of it. Very cool. How long ago was that? Uh, day after Thanksgiving, 2008. 
2008. Okay. So a while ago. So about eight, nine years ago. And I've always had a little fantasy about working in alcohol. Okay. I'm, I'm a good drinker and Got I it. enjoy a good drink. What's your favorite drink? Uh, well, Mother's Beer, of course. Mother's is, Beer. Is well, my well, which which drink. one of the many beers you offer here? So it's a sad story, but Sandy is my favorite okay. beer. We only brew a batch every year for me now. It started out as our summer seasonal and did not sell well. Oh, okay. Sandy is my mother's name. Got it. I love so that it's beer. It's very personal to you. It's a hoppy wheat. Got and it. It just did not sell. Got it. So but you love it. But I love it. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, well, it's... sometimes the best things are like that. You know, there's something that's very <laughs> unique to your taste. That's right. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so I saw, a, you know, when I was uh, researching your business ahead of time, that you take great pride of being part of the uh, Springfield community here. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So how does that manifest in, in your business and what you do every day? So I come from the community newspaper background, and a good community newspaper can really help build a community, bring folks together. Yeah. I had no idea what a good community-minded brewery can do to bring folks together in a community. Yeah. I don't know what Springfield did for free beer for fundraisers and charities before we came along. Is that so? Because we donate. I mean, it's a significant part of Ann's job, who you met, is yeah. just handling donation requests okay. and getting stuff out. We love that. I love that when people have these fundraisers and these special events that we're a part right. of it and that we can give back, you know, literally a glass at a time. That's awesome. What kind community. of events do you sponsor? It just doesn't matter. We okay. almost hate to say we almost don't tell anybody no. Wow. You know, just okay. And, and, and be careful because you may have some listeners here that are from Springfield who are going to come hit you up for free beer. I know. <laughs> so we so we, we really enjoy that, and we just think it's our job in the community okay. to help all these not for profits uh, move further in their mission. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have any particular story that jumps to mind? How, what was the first time that you? Uh, did a uh, sponsorship of an event and and then how did it feel and what how did that spark you to do more boy that's an interesting one you know the first one came to my master asked i'm gonna answer that in two different spots okay. one is somebody came to him it's his son's wedding and we were just getting ready to open up and he just begged me is there any way i can get some beer for my son's wedding it means so much to him and everything yeah so that one ring because we had to do all all these different things sure um boy the first fundraiser or the first donated beer thing that i really remember was the first chamber of commerce commerce banquet okay great big event and not only did we have free beer we had some neons that we set on top of where the beer was so they okay. got dark to show this you know film wow and our neons were glowing on the side. And I you, was like, you must, wow. As a business owner, you must have felt really good with that. I did feel yeah. really, <laughs> really good about that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So then from then on, you uh, continue to engage. And now you give a lot, a lot of free beer to people. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, tell me more about how, how does this impact your hiring? So if you're hiring folks, uh, how many people do you employ today? About 20 okay. folks. Great. And, Go ahead. And, the, and I was going to ask you, how do you work to find those people uh, that, you know, within your community, and how do you make sure that you are uh, perceived positively beyond giving away a lot of free beer, which I'm sure helps? Yeah, the interesting thing is a lot of folks um, really enjoy working at a brewery okay. and enjoy the whole concept. So people, great people, yeah. have really literally knock down our door okay. to come and and see and we've had a number of people this is going to be kind of funny to any business owner who came and volunteered first hoping they would get a position wow that's is like a, just that's amazing. a dream that's a dream for most people yeah that uh and a, and that, a dream for me in, yeah that work in this business cool and so how do you even uh when, what is the process to train so let's say you have one of these volunteers who have um are shown an interest in your business and then they get hired full-time uh, what's your training process like, and how do you imbue the sense of being a part of the community into people as they come onto your company? So a lot of folks, when, when they come here, they've had some sort of interest in, in craft beer. Okay. Sometimes it's drinking, sometimes it's a destination career, sometimes it's a, as a home brewer or sure. something allied. So they come with some knowledge. Um, we, uh, right now, no one who works at the brewery has ever worked at a brewery before. Okay. So we do a lot of training from the ground. Do you up. prefer that? That's a great question. Um, I don't know if it's ideal. Okay. And our sales manager that starts at a Wild Course, he never worked at, he's never worked at a brewery either. Okay. Um, obviously, I must prefer it because I keep doing it. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, and, and it's really interesting. We've got some really good folks on our crews who, who have grown up in their beer industry knowledge here. Okay. And so, yeah, there's that concept of teach them the culture first 
and then teach them the job second, and you might end up being more successful that way. So I haven't really thought about it, so great yeah. question. But yeah, I, I must clearly prefer that. Okay, yeah, because you can teach uh, you know, a skill, but mm -hmm. it's harder to teach attitude and, and a, you know, a, That's positive, a, great point. a positive way to, to, to look That's at the world. Right? Now, the downside of this is people feel a great deal of ownership. Right. So when things aren't going like they think they should, they're really free to throw in opinions. Yeah. And sometimes when you're sitting there with a big decision or a big change, yeah. you know, people are really free to tell you what they think and they get pretty passionate and there's, it's a double-edged sword, how, right? So how do you handle that? You just try to move them as slowly as you can toward where we're going to go. Okay. I mean, first of all, you let everybody speak up because you never know where a great idea is going to come from. Sure. And then with consensus, it's almost like different people are voting and you're listening to what they say. And as different ideas have you know, gain strength, yep. then you hopefully try to go that, that way. Now right. it gets tricky when you firmly believe the brand requires another decision. Those are the hardest things we have. Especially because somebody else on the team might think that the brand requires exactly. a different decision. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. So and you, we're doing better and better at getting more information to the employees yeah. um, so that my coworkers can make you yeah. know, understand the decisions and hopefully uh, make the decisions. In my experience better. with, you know, with running Proven, a, a big thing for me has been the why. Like even if I do something that, that it, it may be, you know, you take everybody's opinions and then somebody, you know, you have to sometimes do things that other people disagree with and you explain the why. And that gives people, I think, a little bit more of like, a, instead of it seeming arbitrary, it seems like, okay, well, here's the reason why. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. And just acknowledging even you've listened to them and right. say, I know this isn't how you want to go. However, this is what we've decided and we appreciate it. You know, that makes sense. Have you ever had uh, a situation where you had somebody who was a good employee who maybe because of cultural fit issues, uh, it, was, it didn't work out with? Yeah, we've had that several times. Okay. And how do you handle that? How do you? It's, it's really painful. Because I, I typically also develop, you know, some personal relationships with people. They become your friends. Uh, I have a friend that calls them work family. Sure thing. They become your work family. And that's even more painful. Yeah. Um, sometimes I've been able to keep good relationships with those folks after the separation from the business and sometimes not. But how do you handle it? The, the trick is to always handle it sooner rather than later. I don't do a good job of that. As soon as you kind of know as that soon there's as, an issue. Yeah, as soon as you know. Yeah, so tell me more. So you say you don't do a good job of that. Is that something that you, I mean, how, did, how, did, have, you, how have you noticed that? I, that's... I'm a non-confrontational person, and okay. I spend too much time avoiding conflict. And in the end, you look back and you realize you stressed yourself out so much more, and you worked harder and made it more painful yeah. by not addressing a scenario quicker. The accumulated, like, slow-burning oh, so pain right. is a lot more than just kind of one-time sever. So as I grow and try to learn myself and yeah. get better myself, that's one of my key issues I'm trying to do better on. Got you. Got you. Well, I mean, I appreciate the, uh, the honesty. In, in, um, now, does working in the alcohol industry make it easier or harder to find people? And to, to, uh, I mean, you were talking a little bit about people wanting to be a part of the brand and part of the community. I'm sure that beer, beer sells. Uh, yeah. But there's, there are probably also some challenges associated with that. We've, we've had very little issue with people being attracted here because of being around beer all the time yeah. and then having issues with being around beer all the time. Yeah. We've only had a couple of those. So it seems like it's been better for us okay. that really good qualified people yeah. are willing to take a chance on us and take a chance on something more so than people who shouldn't be here are here attracted to the alcohol. It makes I sense. I think I answered your question. Yeah, no, that makes total so sense. So it's almost been, it's been an asset 90% of the time and a liability maybe 5 Yeah, and it sounds percent. like people want to impress you and want to do well because this is a good place to be. It, it is. And one other little funny thing, how much beer you can consume during the workday, that's yeah. a hotly debated thing in craft beer. Is that right? And, and other business friends of mine laugh at that. I mean, what we have gone to is 16 ounces. 16 While you're ounces working, in one... You, in a hours. shift, in a shift. You can have 16 ounces. Okay. Because we want the guys in the packaging line to be tasting the beer as they're packaging it. Because what if, what if something bad happened midstream? Right. You know, you got to have a little bit of that. And tasting is different than drinking. Okay. Uh, but we've spent a lot of time worrying about that. And there's, there's breweries that don't let you drink anything. And there's breweries that are pretty open to how much you drink while you're working. Is that so right? It's, a, okay. it's, a, it's an interesting 
Wow. So you're somewhere in the middle. If you, if you, yeah. okay. So there's some people who are like, just have at it. I can have three pints if you want. Mm -hmm. And then some that are like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you're drinking, you're not working. You're right. clocked out. Especially if there's machines. I mean, I can see there's oh, a lot yeah. of like machines and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So tell me a little bit, going back to uh, the patio, this is something I didn't know about your business before I came here, but you have this gorgeous, beautiful uh, lawn area here right outside of your tasting room. Uh, so what happens here currently, we're not during business hours, but what happens here during, say, a, a, when it's 80 degrees on a Saturday in Springfield, Missouri? So we are so lucky to have, have that. This is an old bakery. Okay. And luckily, the bakery folks bought houses around it okay. as they went for sale and just tore them down with this thought maybe of expanding the bakery or something someday. Wow. So we, we end up with a five acre plot. Okay. We've got a couple acres fenced in and back and we have a couple outdoor music festivals a year. Yeah. And um, on an average Saturday, if the weather's nice, we have picnic tables out there. People bring blankets, people bring chairs. We show movies out there okay. when the weather's nice. Where do you put the screen? Do you we put, put the screen in the far corner. You can't okay. really see it from where we're sitting. But Got we it. bring in a big portable screen. And That's cool. we partner with the local, uh, the Moxie, they're the local arts theater. Sure and uh, partner with them and it's a great fundraiser new, new for them movies, older no movies? we show things like um space balls oh, wow. and uh old, old classics okay. typically what's they, your favorite old classic i don't know animal house animal, possibly. have you shown animal house here we have shown <laughs> the big lebowski that's we've, gotta be popular we've shown that multiple times and we'll do costume Contest sometimes wow. people really get into the Big Lebowski. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, that's kind of one of those cult movies uh -huh. that it never seems to go away. It's a, it's a great fundraiser for the Moxie too. Okay. So, uh, so tell me really more nice. about that. What do they do? So they choose the movies. Okay. They do an online poll. They go through the licensing, all the stuff. I mean, you can pay for a movie a whole bunch of different ways. Right. They figure out how to do all that, and then we work the event and we split the gate, and they don't have to show up or do anything. Wow. They just order the movie. So that's a win-win. It's an absolute win-win. That's uh, awesome. Great folks. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, what are some of the oddest or wackiest things you've seen? I mean, I'm sure that with like the parties that, that people uh, must throw back here and, uh, and the fact that you're a business that you're essentially selling community, joy, fun, uh, but you must have seen some wacky stuff. What's some of the uh, wacky yeah, things you've seen? Yeah, people dressing up for events. Yeah. That has, I found that to be really wacky. You know, ladies <laughs> wearing dirndls, obviously, and guys wearing lederhosen. We do a big Oktoberfest. Okay. But people dressing up and the people dressing up their pets. There you when, go. When you have things, those those are pretty wacky. People put later hose in their chihuahua or something. Like that. Uh, something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> That's um, awesome. You, you know, again, in, in terms of just 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 wacky stuff, um, and then oh, people like carrying stuffed animals or stuffed animals with them. Yeah. That's been kind of interesting. <laughs> or just people bringing beer apparatus, like those beer helmets. Oh yeah, with a funnel or different things. Yeah. I yeah. never got that. Well, actually, that's not true. I got it in college. I don't get it anymore. See? <laughs> but this is a place where it's acceptable to bring those odd things that you say may have, somebody may have given you or you may have bought at one time and never used. You can bring them out when we right. have these events. Okay. So. Cool. That's that's really cool. We do a couple outdoor music festivals a year. Oh, tell me more about that. bring in about 3,000 folks. Wow. We just open up the backyard. We bring in bands, uh, local, regional bands. Uh, one of them we also do uh, where not-for-profits can set up in the back. That works out really nice. Okay. We have food trucks, and it's a full-day Saturday thing. Wow. When is and that? We do it twice a year. So Mother's Day is our next one. Got the it. Saturday after Mother's Day. That's uh, May something? Yeah, it'll be May 20th May this 20th. year, the Saturday okay. after. And then our Oktoberfest is okay. always the Saturday after Labor Day. Okay. It's pretty early for an Oktoberfest, but everybody does an Oktoberfest. And we just don't want to bump anybody's Oktoberfest. So you're like the pre-Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest. Get it in, get it over. That's right. There you go. You're like, That's exactly You need to warm right. up for Oktoberfest. <laughs> where you're going to have too many choices. So you, you have one choice to come warm up. It's this one. You're exactly right. That's awesome. Exactly That's awesome. Right. Yeah, maybe I'll look at coming back here uh, with some music uh, friends. And all. What kind of bands welcome. do you have? You know, we tend toward what I would call the more bluegrassy type of music yeah. or classic cover bands. Okay. Although we've had a pretty big variety. Is bluegrass big in Missouri? Um, yeah, okay. I call it bluegrass. Maybe more Americana is, is the technical term. Yeah. So the Ben Miller Band might be the biggest band we've sure. had. There's a band called the Giving Tree Band that okay, came here. It's like here. folk American revival yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's, cool. that's a better term. Awesome. Yeah, actually a lot of folks, uh, th that's been a genre that's been, uh, you know, hired a lot of attention in the last, I would say, 10, 15 years or so. That's cool. That's cool. Um, 
getting it just a tad more somber, I'm sure having been in business for as long as you have, there must have been times where things didn't go well. Can you think of a time when things just went sideways and, and how did you handle that challenge? So the worst moment that we've had here at the brewery was we were going to change our, our packaging. It was time to update our packaging. Okay. And we could not come to consensus on it. And it became a really rough issue that, in fact, some people left, not specifically because of that, but some of the aftermath of that. We just could not come together. I felt impotent as a leader. Yeah. I felt like... You know, I'd go to those meetings, I'd leave with everybody hating me, and it was a, it was so a really rough deal. So what was the discussion? What, what, what were the options? There was a whole variety of options. It was just around what, what our goals were, what our premises were, and everybody was a graphic designer. You know, everybody fancies themselves a marketer yeah. and an advertiser, A podcaster. And a who, podcaster who you... <laughs> and, <laughs> no, and all kidding, those different kidding. things. Yeah. And we just couldn't come couldn't come to consensus. Yeah. Uh, we ended up bringing in a consultant from the outside to help on some other leadership things, other yeah. management things we had. And bless his heart, he was able, that outside voice was able to get us together um, on the table. And his thing was, let's come up with a phrase that we can use. And it was that we're a bunch of fun, clever, quirky folks who are just serious about the business of beer. Fun, clever, quirky, quirky folks. folks. who are clever, or serious about the business of beer. That's awesome. And we use that now as our kind of internal. Do you have it up in the wall somewhere up there? We don't have it up on the wall anywhere. See? I think we should have it up on the wall. Another point I'm missing. (laughs) Okay, very cool. So did this person come in and basically solomonically resolve the conflict? Or did they retrain the team on how to think so that you could solve your own conflict? He he helped us. I'll give him a shout out. His name was Spencer Harris. He worked for a local consulting company. And he came in and led some really good meetings where people could first say what they wanted to say. People would invite him out for beers after work, talk about what's going wrong here. Yeah. And he was able to really help us come together. And I owe him a, a huge debt of gratitude. I'm sure I'm sure that was really valuable for you as a leader and for your business too. Right? Yeah, it was. And humbling to okay. have failed so badly yeah. that you need something like that. Well, I don't know if, I, don't, I mean, I would say definitely humbling, but I would say it, it's a tremendous show of courage as a leader to recognize when you mm-hmm. need help. Well, you're kind. Thank you. No, I mean, I, th- I think it's true. I think uh, I think too many times people have this image of the entrepreneur kind of, uh, you know, climbing up to the top of the mountain like a lone wolf, like going up and doing things or a lone wolf at. Kind of, uh, uh-huh. Either and, way. Uh, and uh, really, I've never spoken to somebody who's been truly successful who doesn't credit a lot of the folks around them for that success. So I think recognizing when is the time to, to get help is awesome. Okay. Yeah, no, I feel cool. better already. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Doc. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were to think about one lesson or one piece of advice that you would give to small business folks, given your uh, experience, what would that be? Authority is the only muscle that never needs flexed to stay in shape. That, I like that. That is from an old friend of mine. I firmly believe that you don't have to go around showing off your authority because you've got it. Right. Right. And actually, one could argue that if you abuse that and overexert your authority, it actually works yeah. to diminish it. I totally agree with you. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. So tell me, where do you see your business going in the next 10 years? It seems like you've invested a lot of your uh, personal, your, your, your soul, your energy into this business. Um, where do you want to see it uh, go? So our hope is to sell deep instead of wide. Okay. And that is to be in the smallest, smartest footprint that we can be. I'd like to grow to the capacity of this building, but if I could just sell in, in the states around Missouri or a couple contiguous states, right now we're in Arkansas, Oklahoma, I'm sorry, we're in Arkansas, Kansas, and Missouri, we're not in Oklahoma. Okay. But those four states, yeah. if I could do everything I need to do to make this a good, viable, strong business, yeah. Uh, that's very important to us is to be respected in the industry and to not uh, not cast our net too wide. Right, right. Sometimes they, that that lack of, I mean, the losing that focus can hurt a business. Absolutely. And also can make you lose passion for the business because you're doing things you don't want to do and everything like that. So it, it pays off to do the things you want to do. I've seen lots of craft breweries just go too far and wide from their home where where people know who they are or at least have a connection. 
Yeah. And uh, I've seen it not work out for a lot of folks. So I hope to hope to learn from somebody else's mistake for a while. Got you. That makes it. That's the that's a saying that I learned uh, a few years ago, which is that what is it? The smart man le- learns from their own mistakes, and the wise one learns from the mistakes of others. <laughs> that's a so, really good one. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah. I got lots of corny quotes. So I've been here for a long time. Um, tell me a little bit about this Springfield, Missouri business community. What's it like to do business here? Uh, what's your relationship with other uh, business folks around here? What's uh, for somebody who's not from here? What is it like? So we have a very collaborative community. Our different governmental entities work together pretty well, and so the different businesses. We're not like, we have one dominant industry, so that's really nice that folks work together really well. Gotcha. So I find it a very pleasant place to do business. Okay. Uh, folks want to talk to you and help you. Not that people don't compete in the same business against one another. Of course. But uh, it's been a really nice place to do business. We're the fastest growing part of the state of Missouri. Uh, so that's really nice. Yeah. And uh, as we continue to grow as a community. Cool. Very cool. And do you, do you get people from St. Louis who come down here and you have like, you know, relationships with folks, I imagine, in Kansas City and everything? Absolutely. We don't sell any beer in St. Louis yet. Okay. Uh, we do sell beer in Kansas City and in Arkansas. And the growth of Northwest Arkansas, I believe, has helped us a great deal. Wow. Okay. Um, so Northwest Arkansas, that would be like Texas Arcana? It would be Bentonville. Okay. And Fayetteville. A lot of ties between okay. Springfield and that area. Okay. And then, and then we're really... Um, really doing a lot, I believe, with nature around us, that we have a beautiful area with lakes, with hiking, with nature's beauty, and that's, that's been something that maybe Springfield's been slow to embrace okay. as an outdoor community, and we really are starting to embrace that. That's beautiful. Love it. Love it. Uh, before we wrap up, where can people find you? Uh, so people can, it's a Mother's Brewing Company. Mother's Brewing Company. Um, we're for sale in all of southern Missouri, which is everything south of I-70. Okay. And then the whole KC, Kansas City metro area. Got it. And then we're in all of Arkansas except Texarkana. Except Texarkana. All the wet counties except Texarkana. Got it. Okay, cool. That is, uh, I, I just happen to drive through there when I go from Texas to Mississippi. So that's, uh, that's the mm-hmm. one I knew. Um, very cool. And your social media, do you have, a, are you guys active on Instagram? Or Facebook? Yeah, all of those. Okay, so uh, Mother's Brewing Company, and you'll be able to find the handles to search ab- for Absolutely. And yeah. Twitter as well? Absolutely, yeah. And follow us on one of those, and new releases we have, specialty beers we have, or special things we're doing here at the brewery. Or we're buy some good. awesome swag, some of the uh, Mother's have, Brewing with a, hat, with a heart and the, uh, the banner. All that stuff. Yeah, the, the heart logo has been probably the luckiest accident we've had. People, How did that uh, people be, relate to that? Tell me about that. that. How did, it was just a notion I had when we decided on the name Mother's, which stands for love. Yeah. We love this idea of a brewery, of craft beer. Yeah. I sketched out this little heart tattoo and said, wouldn't this look great on top of a row of tap handles? Well, turns out it does look great on top of a row of tap handles. Right. And we worked with some artists to make a really nice rendering of the classic mom heart tattoo with our yeah. brewery name on it. That's and cool. And people can remember it. And of people course. like it. Yeah. And that's been pretty sweet. I mean, it caught my attention. That's why we're sitting here. So that's awesome. How about that? That's awesome. Well, congratulations on building a great business that's part of the community here in Springfield. And I'm really grateful that uh, we got to sit down and uh, you shared your story with me. Pablo, it was great to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to Small Business War Stories. If you enjoy the show, share it with a friend or you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or on our blog at blog.proven.com. If you have an idea for us, we'd love to hear it. Please email us at podcast at proven.com. See you next time. Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes.